let's get to pawn and games. These are vital. These are the building blocks. The queen and rook can only come after you've learned how to queen your pawns. So let's uh, deal in that theme. Here, we have the first position. We have a white king on f2, the black king on f4, and the white pawn on a4. And so the pawn needs to get to a8. There is a well-known way of uh, knowing whether this pawn will reach in time or will be captured. And that is called the square. So we may consider that to be a square. So two equal sides and the rest of the square is obviously that one. And the thing is, if the black king is within that square, it's in time to stop a pawn which is not being helped by its king, a, soul, a lonely pawn going to a queen. If the black king is outside that square, and we see it here, that the black king is outside that square, <coughs> then white wins. So here the pawn is too fast. And what's happening? Well, every move, a square is being created, and it's a smaller and smaller square. And so we can see that black's king is always one step behind. White to move, is a, the black king needs to be in the smaller square, but again, uh, black is going to miss. And so black comes again, but now that he's in the old square, he needs to be in this new square. And so again, a7, king c7, and now he needs to be in the smallest square. square. So white wins the race and queens the pawn. After that, we know how to mate. Now suppose it were black's turn to play. Then black simply can play king e4. You can be anywhere within the square. So here we have the square. And black is within the square. a5, king d5, again the new square. a6, king c6, again within the new square, a7, king b7, once again the king is in time, a8, king takes a8, and black is in time. Things are different when the king can support the pawn, those were with a lone pawn, but a king that can uh, help the pawn then there's a totally different dynamic. And now we come to something called the opposition. This is an opposition. It's where two kings face off separated by a file. They obviously have to be separated by a file. And uh, here you can see they're exactly equidistant. Um, now suppose it were black's turn to play. He would be forced to lose the opposition. In other words, he has to move somewhere, step out in some way. And you see that he's gone left, white will shift right. And if he shifts right, then white will shift left, from white's perspective. And um, in both cases, uh, black cannot recreate the opposition. Because if black goes here, white will go here. And if black comes here, then white can advance his pawn now. White can also recreate the opposition like this. King e6, king e8, and now it's white's turn to move. So you may ask, uh, how does he recreate the opposition? And the thing is, he can make his pawn move now, and now it's black's turn to move, and he must give way again. The position with the king on the sixth is slightly exceptional, but I want to just illustrate the concept of the opposition. So, um, the two kings face off, then the person who is to move is usually seen as losing the opposition, and the person who has, um, whose opponent has to play is winning the opposition. So here, um, that only differs when you have an extra move. So you can be in a position where your king is about to lose the opposition, but if you have a pawn somewhere else or a piece somewhere else which can move, then you can hand back the move to your opponent and win the opposition again, which is why I said usually. So in the absence of anything else, white would 
lose the opposition technically and um, but here he has a pawn move but remember the sixth rank is an exception i'll show you that in a future example suppose it were white's turn to move he could go f5 and here we don't go to the opposite side we go to the same side you only go to the opposite side when you're trying to exploit uh, from the stronger side the weaker side must keep the opposition and this is useful to know when the pawn gets like this, then it's a draw. e6, king e8, king f6, king f8. Again, maintaining the opposition. So white has to do it with this pawn. King e8, king e6. But now remember, the black king has no moves, but is not under check, so stalemate. Well, let's say white tries to be tricky and go here. Then, well, both moves work, but let's stick with one theme. King e7, king d5. Now, what is white's next move going to be? It's going to come to this square. So we need to be able to win the opposition. Therefore, we need to go back here. Watch the idea. And black prepares himself to regain the opposition. And now again, the same logic. e7, king e8, king e6 is a draw by stalemate. Let's see what happens if black is careless and goes here. Well, then now white wins the opposition. So black goes here. White plays e7. Black has only one move, so he has to make it. And now the king is ready to support the pawn, which queens, and then white will give mate. So that would be a blunder. But as long as you maintain the opposition, so the opposition is reach this uh, separation with the opponent to play. The sixth rank is different. Now suppose it were black's turn to move here. Then black could go king d8, white will go king f7, and there is nothing more to stop the pawn because the pawn will be supported on every step of the way by the king, so the black king cannot stop it reaching the eighth rank. White will make a queen and win. But what happens if uh, if it's white's turn to play. Well, on the sixth rank, there's one important exception because after king f6, king stays on the same side. e6, we have handed the move back to black. And so black has lost the opposition. He goes back, e7 wins the game. There is an even bigger exception than the sixth rank, and that is the h5. Here, it doesn't matter. Whether this is black to move or white to move, it's a draw. So white goes here, black goes here, h6. White has won the opposition, but now watch. H, king h8, h7, and this is stalemate because the square to which the black king would normally move now falls outside the board. In effect, it's i. But there is no i in chess. So the king cannot go anywhere and it's run out of moves. And that's the difference with the h file. Same rule on the a file. If it were black turns to play, black's turn to play, he goes um, king g8, king g6, king h8, h6. Again, he waits king g8, h7, king h8, king h6, and it's a stalemate again. But because this, it's a stalemate both with the king on g6 and on h6, it's a draw anyway. But watch what black is doing. King g8, king g6, king h8, h6, king g8. Notice that he's staying within these two squares. Because you must always use your king to block the square that your enemy pawn wants to get to. So it's easier to appreciate on the other side, h6. This would be a blunder because now the pawn advances and it takes away the square the king needs to get back to the corner. And so there is nothing stopping the pawn. So in pawn and games, the king has to do the blocking by itself unless there is some other piece available to do it. Here the king has to block the pawn itself. So those are some very important ideas in um, um, king and pawn and games. The opposition is very important. 
there's an exception on the sixth rank. And remember, the H and A files are uh, a different uh, animal altogether. Um, on the H and A file, there isn't enough space, so the king is likely, likely to be stalemated. Let's just cover one little topic here. Um, now, we can see that black has won the opposition because white will have to move his king. This concept is called Zugzwang. So it's, in this case, it's uh, winning the opposition. But a more general concept, which you should know, is called Zugzwang. Zugzwang is the situation in which you're forced to move. By this it means that your, your pieces are already in their best squares, but because of the obligation to move, remember in chess you cannot pass. Because you're under the obligation to move, you make a move that worsens your position. So here we can see that it's, it is a kind of mutual zugzwang. With white to play, he has to move his king away and lose the opposition, and therefore worsen his position. With black to play, he is again forced to move his king. Black himself has to make this move that worsens his king, and white breaks through. So in both cases, we see that both players are in Zugzwang. Um, Zugzwang is a more sophisticated concept because it takes into account any position where um, the obligation to move for worsens your position, whereas opposition is usually only with kings. Um, here the kings um, oppose each other, and it's a very important uh, mechanism in king and pawn in games. But Zugzwang is a more general concept. It, it, it can happen in middle games, uh, even in the opening. If one side is forced to move and thereby worsen its position, it's called Zugzwang. Um, Zugzwang is a helpful topic because we will see it in a lot of uh, rook and games, but that we'll deal with in the next chapter. Meantime, king and pawn endings, you should definitely practice exercises several times. Repeat them um, day after day till you, you know these mechanisms cold. Because you must know this, that here you would rather keep the opposition. Let's now um, do this here. And you see how always after e6, you want to go to the square behind the pawn so that when the king approaches, now you can gain the opposition. So that's, that's a very important trick to know. If you move the king to f8, it doesn't matter that you had the opposition. You've lost now. Um, so this move is vital. And you may want to just keep that in mind anyway because you'll need it again. King e8, king d6, king d8. And again, we have the opposition. Just to give you another example, after king e5, I can play king e8 because the same property. If king d6, I go king d8. And if king f6, I go king f8. So you watch out for where the white king is. And then you plan your moves in such a way that you always respond and then hand back the move to white. That is the opposition. And um, like I said, you should practice this very, very thoroughly.